The new Acer Helios 300 is almost like the bigger brother of the Acer Nitro 5, but what are the differences between these two gaming laptops and which should you get? In this detailed comparison, I'll look at pretty much everything to help you decide if it's worth paying more money for the Helios 300 or if the Nitro 5 is enough. Let's start off with the differences in specs between the two units I'm testing with. Both are pretty similar, they've got the same Intel i7-9750H CPU, Nvidia GTX 1660 Ti graphics and 16GB of memory and dual channel. Both have M.2 NVMe SSDs, my Helios 300 happens to have a 256GB one, while my Nitro 5 has a 512GB one, but this will vary based on where you're buying. Both have a 15.6 inch 1080p screen available with either 144Hz or 60Hz refresh rates, and both have gigabit ethernet, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5 for network connectivity. Both laptops are available with different specs though, you can find examples and updated prices linked in the description. Both have black lids, matte black aluminium for the Helios with blue accents around the Predator logo in the middle, and matte black plastic with a subtle logo in the centre and textured triangle finish towards the sides for the Nitro 5. Build quality of both machines was good, however the Helios 300 definitely felt better. It had more metal on the exterior while the Nitro 5 was all plastic. In terms of weight, my Helios 300 was a little heavier, but it's not a fair comparison as it had a 2.5 inch drive installed. With the 180 watt power brick and cables for charging included, the Helios was only a little over 80 grams more, so without that drive it's probably a bit lighter. As for size differences, the Nitro 5 is just a little bigger in every dimension, not really by a noticeable amount, but the Helios 300 was thinner. As for screen differences, both of my laptops had 1080p 60Hz IPS panels, so expect different results with the 144Hz options that most people are likely to buy for gaming. The results were very close in terms of colour gamut, though the Helios 300 had an edge in brightness and contrast ratio. No major differences though. Neither laptop has G-Sync or the ability to disable Optimus. Backlight bleed was pretty similar. Both had minor patches around the edges, but I didn't actually notice this when viewing darker content, but results will vary between laptops and panels. Both had some screen flex, however I found the Helios 300 a little more rigid, probably due to the metal lid while the Nitro 5 is plastic. Although they have thin screen bezels, both were able to keep the 720p camera up the top. The camera looks alright and the audio sounds okay. The 720p camera is about average. It looks okay but still a bit blurry, and the microphone sounds about average too. The keyboards were very similar in terms of layout. Both have accented WASD and arrow keys, and a shortcut in the top left corner of the numpad for accessing the control panel software, while the power button is up the top right. As I didn't use both side by side, I can't directly compare keyboard usage, but from what I remember they were quite similar. Here's how typing sounds to give you an idea of what to expect. The Nitro 5 only has red backlighting, while my Helios 300 has a 4 zone RGB keyboard, however not all of them have this. It seems that most regions only sell it with a blue keyboard, so you'll have to check when buying what it's actually got. All secondary functions on all keys are lit with both laptops though. The Helios has a dedicated button to enable turbo mode above the keyboard on the left, more on this later. Both touchpads use precision drivers, were smooth to the touch and worked well. I can't really recall any differences between them in terms of usability. There was some flex while pushing down on both, a little more from the Nitro 5 which isn't surprising given the all plastic build, however I never actually noticed this when using either of them day to day. Both machines show up fingerprints quite easily, but were easy to clean due to the smooth surface. The IO is quite a bit different in terms of layout. On the left both have a Kensington lock, gigabit ethernet and two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports. The Nitro 5 also has a HDMI 2.0 output and USB 3 Type-C port, while the Helios has an air exhaust vent, power input and 3.5mm audio combo jack. On the right, the Nitro 5 just has its 3.5mm audio combo jack, USB 2.0 Type-A port, power input and air vent, while the Helios 300 has a USB 3 Type-C port, no Thunderbolt in either machine, a third USB 3 Type-A port, mini display port 1.4 and HDMI 2.0 outputs. On the back, both just have air exhaust fans, however the Nitro 5 only has fans on one side, as we'll see soon. Otherwise, there's nothing on the front of either machine. For those not keeping track, the I.O. is quite similar, however the Helios 300 is better overall. 
Not only does it have air vents on both sides for additional cooling, it's also got a mini DisplayPort output which the Nitro 5 is missing. Both have three USB Type-A ports, but one of the Nitros is 2.0 while the Helios is all USB 3. Underneath, the designs are kind of similar, with vents for air intake towards the back, rubber feet in similar positions, and the speakers are found towards the front on the left and right corners. I didn't listen to them side by side so can't directly compare them, but going by the recordings I have, they sounded extremely similar. Maybe the Helios was a little clearer. The max volume was similar in any case, and the latency mod results with the Nitro 5 were significantly better compared to the Helios 300. The Helios 300 also plays this sound by default on boot. You can turn it off through the Predator Sense software or in the BIOS though. The Nitro 5 has no boot sound. Speaking of the BIOS, here's a super quick run through of each of them. Both are quite basic and locked down with not really many advanced options available to the user. The bottom panels can be removed by taking out 10 Phillips head screws for the Helios and 11 for the Nitro 5. Both machines offer similar features. They've both got two M.2 slots, a 2.5 inch drive bay, Wi-Fi card, two memory slots, and the same battery down the bottom. Where they differ is in the cooling design, but we'll look at thermals soon. Both laptops have the same 58 watt hour battery, and I've tested both machines with the screen brightness at 50%, background apps disabled, and keyboard lighting off. Despite them having the same size battery, the Helios 300 was lasting longer both in and outside of gaming. Now let's take a look at thermals. Both laptops were tested in an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius with the same settings. So this should be as close as we can get to an apples to apples comparison. By default out of the box, the Helios 300 has a minus 0.125 volt undervolt applied to the CPU while the Nitro 5 does not. In the upcoming tests, I've tested the Helios 300 with turbo mode, so max fan speed, and the Nitro 5 with its fan set to maximum, though it doesn't explicitly have different performance modes like the Helios. Basically, both are set with the best settings that each laptop offers out of the box. With the Helios, turbo mode maxes the fan speed, raises CPU power limits, and overclocks the graphics. The Nitro 5 sees no such changes. However, I've included results with the Nitro 5 both at stock, but also with the same CPU undervolt and GPU overclock that the Helios 300 has to see how it compares in an even playing field. I've tested thermals of both machines in much more depth than what we'll cover here, so check the full reviews linked in the description for more information. These are the CPU and GPU temperatures while under stress test. I've got both the A to 64 CPU stress test with only stress CPU checked, and the Heaven benchmark at max settings at the same time to fully load the system. The Helios was slightly warmer when it came to the CPU temperature, however the Nitro 5 was warmer on the GPU. These are the clock speeds for the same tests just shown. The Helios 300 is coming out ahead here. It's able to hit higher clock speeds which probably explains the slightly warmer CPU. And higher GPU clock speeds were also hit, perhaps in part due to the cooler temperatures which GPU Boost prefers. These are the TDP values reported by Hardware Info. We can see that the Nitro 5 is capped to a 45 watt limit, however the Helios 300 is able to surpass this, which explains the warmer CPU and higher clock speed. Meanwhile both 1660 Ti's are reaching their 80 watt limit. These are the power limits set by each machine. In turbo mode, the Helios is able to get 11 watts higher than the Nitro. Here's what we're looking at in terms of Cinebench R20 scores from both machines. Even when we apply the same undervolt to the Nitro 5 that the Helios 300 has by default, it's almost 500 points behind. This is because the Nitro 5 has that 45 watt limit on the CPU, which applies both in CPU only workloads like this, but also combines CPU and GPU workloads such as gaming. Meaning that in pretty much all workloads, the Helios 300 will see better CPU performance. As for the areas where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle the Nitro 5 was a little warmer. But 30 is pretty average in this test, the Helios is just cool. When gaming with the fans on default auto speed, the Nitro 5 was warmer. With the stress tests running and same fan speed, the Nitro 5 is again warmer. And then with the fans at max speed, the Helios 300 is a fair bit cooler compared to the Nitro. Let's listen to those fan speeds and see why this is the case.
at idle, both laptops were still audible. The Helios was a little louder though. When gaming with the fans on auto speed, the Helios was again louder. And then with the fans at maximum, the Helios was still a bit louder. Both laptops do however give you the option of customising fan speed. So the louder Helios could be an advantage. If the fans go faster, it gives you more headroom within which to adjust. Overall, there aren't too many differences in terms of thermals. But it seems that the Helios 300 has a slight advantage. The CPU is a little warmer in my tests, but I think that's a good thing in this instance as it has a higher power limit, resulting in higher clock speeds and better performance. While the GPU remains cooler with higher clock speeds compared to the Nitro. Next, let's compare some games. As both laptops were tested at different times, different Nvidia drivers were in use. But I'm not expecting too big of a difference due to this. I've also included results with the Nitro 5 both at stock and while undervolted and overclocked so we can attempt a more apples to apples comparison with the Helios 300 for someone that's willing to tweak it a little. The main differences between them in this customised state is that the Helios 300 has a higher CPU power limit under combined CPU and GPU loads and higher fan speeds. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode. I've got the Helios 300 results in the top bar, which is with turbo mode enabled, then the Nitro 5 in the two bars below. The middle bar represents the custom settings I put in place for the Nitro 5. So same CPU undervolt and GPU overclock as the Helios out of the box. Though as discussed earlier, the Helios 300 does still have a higher CPU power limit. The bottom bar shows the Nitro 5 at stock out of the box settings. As I thought it would be useful to show the difference these changes are making. Especially if you don't plan on customising your Nitro 5. In this test with our custom settings in place, the Nitro 5 was ahead of the Helios 300 both in average FPS and 1% low. However this game has seen a number of improvements lately and my Helios results are older. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with a built in benchmark. And with the custom settings in place on the Nitro 5, it was actually slightly ahead of the Helios 300. Though with both at stock, the Helios 300 was 4% faster. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was also tested with the built in benchmark. And this is a fairly CPU heavy test. The 1% low with the Nitro 5 and custom settings actually dropped. So not sure if this was preventing it getting adequate power or what. However the average frame rate was slightly ahead of the Helios 300. Though all average results are within 1 FPS anyway. Fortnite was tested using the replay feature. And as I tested the Nitro 5 after the Helios, I didn't use the exact same replay file as the game updates frequently. However I did perform the same pass through the game, so it should still be quite comparable. In this test, the Nitro 5 was able to catch up to the Helios 300 in terms of average frame rate. However the 1% low on the Helios was still 9% ahead. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane. In this test, the average frame rates were all extremely comparable. However, the Nitro 5 was seeing higher 1% lows, and more so once applying the customizations. CSGO was tested with the Uletical FPS benchmark, and was a win for the Helios 300. We can see the slight improvement the customizations made with the Nitro 5 weren't enough to catch up to the Helios 300 in this test. Overwatch was tested in the practice range with the exact same pass through in all tests. Interestingly, the 1% low from the Nitro 5 was a fair bit ahead of the Helios 300. Although the Helios 300 was slightly ahead when it came to average FPS. Far Cry 5 was tested with the built in benchmark. And although the custom settings give the Nitro 5 a little boost, the Helios 300 was still 5% ahead in terms of average frame rate. The Witcher 3 is a fairly GPU demanding game, and there was basically zero difference for the Nitro 5 between stock and custom settings, while the Helios 300 was 8% ahead. Ghost Recon Wildlands was tested with the built in benchmark, and was another game where the customised Nitro 5 was able to outperform the Helios 300. Granted, not by much. Just like most other differences, many of these aren't going to significantly affect actual gameplay between machines. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built in benchmark, and the average frame rate with the Nitro 5 went above the result from the Helios 300. However, the 1% low performance did go back just a little. Doom was tested as a Vulcan title to see if it behaved any differently. However, the results were similar to many other games, with the Nitro 5 at stock behind the Helios 300, but the modifications were enough to give it the lead. Strange Brigade was also tested with Vulcan, but with the built-in benchmark this time. Technically, the Helios 300 was still ahead of the modified Nitro 5. However, the difference is extremely close. Margin of error stuff. On average, over these 13 games tested, when we compare the stock out-of-the-box results from the Helios 300 against the stock results from the Nitro 5, we're seeing the Helios getting 5.2% higher average FPS at the highest setting presets. 
The results look good for the Helios. It's beating the Nitro in every single game in terms of average frame rate. That is, until we apply the same CPU undervolt and GPU overclocks to the Nitro 5 that the Helios 300 has by default. When we do this, the Nitro 5 was now ahead in more titles. However, when actually looking at the overall average, there's almost zero difference. I found these results quite interesting. The Nitro 5 with the custom settings was closer to the Helios 300 than I expected. As the Nitro 5 has the lower 45 watt power limit on the CPU, I thought this would result in it coming up behind. However, that didn't really seem to matter here. I've also got the overall scores for 3D Mark Firestrike and Time Spy benchmarks. Like the games, the custom settings with the Nitro 5 are closing the gap, though the Helios 300 did still have a slight lead in both tests. I've tested storage with Crystal Disk Mark. My Helios 300 came to me with a 256GB NVMe SSD, while the Nitro 5 came with a 512GB NVMe SSD. Those storage sizes will vary. With the specific drives that my machines had, the Helios 300 was faster, though smaller. My Helios 300 also came with a 1TB drive installed, and these are the results from that. For updated pricing, check the links in the description, as prices will change over time. In the US, the Helios 300 with these specs goes anywhere from $1100 to $1200 US dollars, but also goes on sale for $1000 from time to time. The Nitro 5 with 1660 Ti I've tested here doesn't actually appear to be sold in the US currently, making a direct comparison difficult. This means that if you do want 1660 Ti level performance, the Helios 300 is going to be your option between the two, and this difference alone probably makes choosing it worthwhile. The highest GPU available in the Nitro 5 in the US seems to be the 1650 currently. The conclusion from my 1650 vs 1660 Ti video was basically that it's often going to be worth paying a little extra for 1660 Ti performance, as it's significantly better when compared to the 1650. Here in Australia, the 1660 Ti Nitro 5 is 2000 Australian dollars, while the Helios 300 is 2200 Australian dollars so 10% more money to get the Helios. Let's summarize the differences and discuss which is worth it. Although both laptops have a clear gaming design aesthetic, personally I prefer the blue look of the Helios 300 over the Nitro's red. The Nitro is also more plastic, giving an edge in overall build quality to the metal Helios. And the Helios is also slightly smaller in every dimension. Out of the box, the Helios 300 performs better than the Nitro 5 in games. It's tuned quite well. Not only does the CPU come undervolted, but turbo mode also overclocks the graphics and raises the power limit of the CPU. In most games, it was possible to even the results by manually applying the CPU undervolt and GPU overclock to the Nitro 5, so if you're willing to manually make these changes yourself, the overall performance is quite similar, at least when using a Nitro 5 with same specs. For CPU only tasks where the GPU isn't used though, the Helios still has an advantage of higher CPU power limit. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to increase this on the Nitro 5, meaning CPU workloads should perform better on the Helios, as we saw in Cinebench. There wasn't that big of a difference when it came to thermals. The Helios was a bit warmer on the CPU, though this was due to the higher power limits just discussed, which does result in better performance. Otherwise, the GPU was cooler and hitting higher speeds. The fans in the Helios did get a little louder. However, you can customize the fan speed of both laptops. Although both of my laptops had a 60Hz screen, 144Hz is an option too. Comparing the 60Hz variants that I tested though, both were very similar. There were many more similarities, including similar keyboards. Granted, the Helios does have the option of RGB lighting, similar touchpads, and similar speakers. The Helios 300 had slightly better I.O., including a mini DisplayPort 1.4 output, and it drops the USB 2.0 Type-A port present in the Nitro 5 for USB 3. Despite having the same size battery, the Helios lasted slightly longer, both in and outside of gaming. In terms of upgradability, they were essentially the same. Both have two memory slots, two M.2 slots, single 2.5 inch drive bay, and Wi-Fi card. In the end, I think these are some decent improvements for 10% more money, at least with the same spec configs I've got here. If you just care about out of the box game performance, the Helios 300 is the better pick as you can just press the turbo button and forget about it. Otherwise you can save some money with the Nitro 5 and close the performance gap if you're willing to undervolt and overclock yourself. If the 1660 Ti Nitro 5 isn't available for you, well based on my testing, the next best option, the 1650, would have to be quite a lot cheaper. As the 1660 Ti performs around 47% better on average over 15 games that I've tested. I'll leave a link to that comparison in the video description.
If you're on an even tighter budget, the Nitro 5 is also available with some lower end AMD configurations as well. So which of these two gaming laptops would you pick? Acer's Nitro 5 or Helios 300? Let me know which and why down in the comments, I'm interested to see which you prefer. And if you're new to the channel, consider getting subscribed for future comparisons and tech videos like this one.